and Han from the World Bank. Hi, um, I'm a consultant at the World Bank, and I work on in a field called knowledge management, which doesn't really mean much of anything, but a little bit of everything. So I had the um, pleasure of uh, trying out an experiment at the World Bank for the last eight months, um, something called financial crisis predictions market. Uh, now, to sort of understand why I ran this experiment, um, it requires understanding a little bit about what the World Bank is. Now, I won't go into the details, but basically, it's good that Don went first because he basically described it to a T. It works exactly like that sabotage manual talks about. There are committees upon committees upon committees, and things don't get done um, that should get done. Um, politics gets highly involved in any decision-making process, and probably the worst thing, uh, the most damaging thing, is that information does not get conveyed um, from the top down, but also especially from the bottom up. The World Bank is a huge organization. It has over 10,000 staff, uh, an army of consultants, uh, 100 uh, offices around the world, and it's very difficult to get information from the field and from the people who are actually seeing what's going on on the ground up to the senior managers. So when you hear about uh, red lights turning into green lights, you know that you know, this is something that happens at, an, at any large institution. If you've worked in a large institution, you probably have the idea. So um, that gives you kind of the background of the difficulties that, that my organization faces. So where do prediction markets come into this? How do they help solve any problem that this organization might face? Well, I should give a little bit of explanation of what a prediction market is so you understand. It's most simply put um, a mechanism to aggregate diverse opinions. So people trade in a uh, make trades on the likelihood that an event will occur. So will Obama become re-elected in 2012? Or will a politician, formerly known as the governor of Alaska, uh, be nominated to the Republican, uh, selected as the Republican nominee in 2012? So you can ask these kinds of questions, but you can also ask questions that are quite specific to an organization and the work that it does. So we decided to set this up and see if we could get, um, get any kind of good data out of, out of our prediction market. Now, we decided to start with a financial crisis. And this may not be the most typical application of a prediction market, but we decided for certain reasons that this might be a really good application for it. Uh, the reason being is that the financial crisis created huge uncertainty in the outlook for the global economy and huge uncertainty about the role of the World Bank and our sister organization, the IMF, and their, their role in the global economy. So um, prediction markets offered sort of two benefits that could potentially deal with this great uncertainty. One is that it allowed us to tap into the intelligence in the field. So if anyone has access to the internet and they're in a country office, they can very quickly make a trade and express their opinion. What will GDP growth be? Or will um, certain countries have to sign up for um, emergency lending? So they were very easy, it's very easy for people to sort of sign in and express their opinion. The normal routines take forever. They can take months to get this information back to the headquarters. Um, the other issue that it helps deal with is that it's a real-time estimate. So anybody can express their opinion at any given moment. Normally, uh, the IMF puts out a, an estimate for uh, global growth twice a year. It's something called the World Economic Outlook. And in 2008, it put out five versions of these. And in 2009, it's put out three so far. So the problem that developed is that these institutions were behind the curve continually, both on the curve going down, how bad will this crisis get, and potentially on the way up, is the crisis resolving? Is it getting any better? So, the prediction markets offer potentially a way to kind of deal a little better with, with these issues. Um, so that gives you sort of the basic background. Why do we try to run a prediction market? Now, how do you run a prediction market? What is the nitty gritty? What do you need to do to make it actually work? And this is something I still struggle with, uh, even eight months on, but this is what I figured out after, after this little experiment. The first is you need a really good platform. You need one that's user friendly, very easy to use. If you don't have that, you're not going to get anywhere. And we decided to go with Inkling. Adam didn't ask me to say anything, but I can just say it's worth checking out if you want to um, 
give it a look on a very user-friendly, easy-to-use kind of platform. That's just the basic. The really difficult part is getting, um, making it work in a sort of social sense inside a large bureaucracy. That's the really, that's the crux of it. And so there are sort of two issues you need to do to, to deal with this. One is to ask really good questions. It may sound kind of silly, but you have to think very carefully about what kind of questions you're going to ask. Are they going to be interesting to people to answer? Are they going to set off any bells and whistles in uh, some, somewhere inside the organization? I learned the hard way about this because I proposed a question, uh, will X country default in the next year? That was a big no-no. That went to corporate relations and they nearly shut the thing down. So I just advise, think very carefully about the questions you want to ask when you get started with something like this. Um, the second thing is you need to motivate people. Now this prediction market works with virtual currency. And a lot of people I've talked to about it, they say, well, why would anyone participate in something like this? Why would they do that? And I was a little skeptical at first. But inside large organizations, if you can use social recognition, it works, it does amazing things. If you can build people up so that they feel like they're getting recognition from their higher ups, it can actually promote um, a, a lot of activity. I found people who will, I go onto the platform and I have a look, I see that people are making trades at 3 a.m. on a Saturday morning. So if people are doing that without any money involved, you know that you really need to tap into the social recognition. It's there, it's just a question of making sure that um, you make a big name for the people who have done well in the market. Um, I don't know how many. So the, the final issue that I want to talk about is the million dollar question. Has this experiment been successful? And at this point, I can only say yes. I can only give a mixed answer. Yes, in one sense it has been successful, and in another sense it hasn't. In the sense that it's been successful, the data that we produced is quite good. Um, I've looked at it, we've done it for eight months. The predictions aren't perfect, but they're quite accurate. And they're actually probably superior to some of the other forecasting techniques that are out there. So in that strict sense, it's been a success. In another sense, it hasn't yet been a success because I haven't convinced the people at the senior levels who actually make the decisions that they need to act on this data. If you don't do that, the data doesn't mean anything. I'm getting there, it's getting to that point, but it takes a long time in a large organization and it really takes persistence. Uh, you have to go back again and again and again and try to get somebody to pay attention. But I think over time that will happen. I ha I, I'm a true believer in this kind of thing, collective intelligence, and um, if you, since we've done it for eight months, we have this data out there. I think that when we want to run another prediction market, enough people will know about it inside the organization and enough people will be convinced of the validity of the data. That the next time we try to do this, it will start convincing people and people will start making decisions based on that. So that's sort of my, uh, where I stand. So persistence is really the thing that you want to think about uh, in running something like this. That's it, thanks.